What's the crack, lads? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be taking a look at the top 10 in the world, the top 10 ranked players on PlayStation in the world, and we're going to be showing you why their formations work, what they're doing, a running team between all their squads, why they're playing the game that they're playing it, and I'm just going to break it down and simplify this and not overcomplicate it. Too many people overcomplicate this game, which essentially can be wrapped up in one neat bow of playing central, not losing possession in dangerous areas, and not getting caught in the counter-attack. And also, one big decision you need to make if you are looking to push rank, it is consistency. And it's all about learning what players play the way they play when you're not controlling them. That's what separates a good player from a top 100 player, is letting the AI do what it's good at doing, right? And covering gaps that you just literally cannot cover because you can only control one player at a time. So there's going to be clips going through this video I'm going to be just showing you the squads and talking you through the squads. I'm also going to focus on squad rank number one, um, the best player in the world currently ranked at the moment and why he's doing what he's doing and really just break it down to the core why it's so effective, right? And it's not rocket science, right? It's very, very simple when you break it down. We're going to do that today. So you will notice a running team or a running pattern between all squads. They will either have a back three or a back four with three center backs or a back five with four center backs, sometimes five center backs. Now, what I say is you will always have consistency between lines, right? When you're playing with these squads through the middle. And it's all about not losing the ball in midfield. You have from Mbappe, Totti, Vieira and Rijkaard, you've got four central figures that you will be able to play through up the pitch. Foden is going to link up with Cannavaro. Costa Corte is going to link up with Pedri. Baggio and Messi are going to be your attackers when they get it in the box and they're going to track back when you want them to track back. And also, we're not going to focus too much on the sub-tactics here. I'm going to show you that for rank number one. But this is a very solid squad with the Champs that's going to be focused on central play and really fast, rapid, effective attack, uh, you know, tackling when they're out without the ball and scoring when they do have the ball. Now, this is more kind of where the meta is at at the moment, right? This meta hasn't really changed since forever, okay? You've got one big, tall, strong target man up front in Sarlat, which is the bullet header version of him. Now, you can roll in whoever you want here, Hullet, Collar, whichever player you feel comfortable using. You don't have to have these players, okay? Obviously, Sarla is going to be a beast in the air, but if you've got Ronaldo bullet header, if you've got Collar, any of those boys will do the job. Same with Maldini. If you've got Nesta instead of Maldini or another defensive fullback like Turam, they'll do the job as well. But this is what I'm talking about. Tio Hernandez is your outlet here. The reason why he's an outlet in this squad, even though this player is still using the champs, he has Kak and Platini in a double pivot attacking midfielders. He's got Ronaldinho and he's got a double up front. This guy is definitely using a, a, a sub tactic, right? Ronaldinho will potentially not play there. I would say that Sarlat and Mbappe will go into a two, and he's probably going to play a triple AMF with Kaka Platini and Ronaldinho, and then obviously you're going to have your back four. Again, you have Tio Hernandez as your outlet to get up and down the wings if you're going to be crossing the ball into Sarlat, and then Tami Yasu and Maldini and Van Dijk are going to be doing the damage holding the, the opponent, right? It's a very simple formation. That 4-2-1-3, you will see that repeated, right? And as I said, I'm not going to go and overcomplicate this. You will see the pattern yourself. Again, you have the same system here. Instead of Tio Hernandez, you've got Roberto Carlos as your outlet now this time. You've got Kaka and Guti again. You've got Makalele Holden. You've got Frank Rijkaard and Carlos Puyol and Bergomi, who's down as a right back. But don't let that confuse you. He is a center back in this system. Again, you've got your block of three. You take Carlos out of this block of three. You've got Puyol, Rijkaard and Bergomi. And then your three boys up front as well. Messi cutting in from the right with the left foot. Neymar cutting in from the left with the right foot. Sammy Eto up front, who's one of the most slept on cards ever, this old epic version of him. Kakaguti in a double pivot AMF again. Xavi Alonso, or Xavi Alonso, I should say, is going to be your quick counter. And you're going to see a mix between quick counter and long ball counter. It's going to be very rare that you see somebody playing a different formation or tactical setup. Again, we've got Alonso here back again. So it's going to be Deschamps, Alonso, Deschamps, Alonso, Alonso, Deschamps. Very rare will you see Pep. Very rare will you see De La Fuente or Stoichkovic or any of those boys, right? Costa Corta, Nesta, Van Vite and Turam. What do all these players have in common? Yes, Turam and Costa Corta can play left and right back, but also they can all play a centre back. And that is what you're going to be doing again. A block of four. Davids is going to be there with Hollett, Honus and, of course, Ronaldinho. Now, Honus is a good player attacking midfield, but also you have the option of using him as a right winger here with Messi through the, the middle with Rafael Leao on the left. It's a very interesting formation again, but these guys aren't going for interesting formations. As I said, too many times people get bogged down and saying like, you know, 
it's not it's not a like meta is not a dirty word man meta is using the most effective tactic available for you to get instant wins and what i mean by instant wins is that you know that if you're going to come up against somebody and you're able to play your meta play style you're probably going to beat them because they're also exceptional at the game so again you will see very very little variation between these that's why i'm not making a massive like in-depth video on this because the patterns speak for themselves. I mean, even Stevie Wonder can see what they're trying to do. Now, you will see here that there's a tiny bit of an adjustment here. You've got wan down as a right back. Now, wan can play as a centre back if you train him that way as well. But also, wan is probably one of the best and most defensive right backs that you can have in the game. He's, he's up there with Turam, okay? But you still have your block of three. Cannavaro, Rijkaard and Van Dijk. You're back with Xabi Alonso again. Rude Hullet, Messi up front. Now, Mbappe is on the right. Mbappe is not going to stay on the right there. This sub tactic is going to move Kylian Mbappe up into Rudy Hullet's position. Hullet and Messi are going to be up front and they're going to stay there. You're going to have Ronaldinho more central and you're going to have Mbappe up. Or else you're going to have Deco as a double pivot AMF, which a lot of people are now using as well. So don't let these... Ma I'll show you at the end of the video, lads, with rank number one, why you should not let these people, um, you know, especially the top ranks kind of mess with your head because they will definitely change things in game that they're not going to be playing with this starting 11 that you have here and i'll show you in a second with rank one again rafael leao is playing as an ss yes he can play there uh Hoynes is back a little bit more deep here again you've got your flat four Riker and Vieira are going to probably swap positions or in my opinion we're going to show you with rank one what this guy is probably going to do he's going to turn his back four into a back five and he's going to play with frankie de Jong holden and he's going to have a double pivot amf and then two up front as well in a in a in a five two two basically, um that's kind of the system he will go here or a five three two I should say so that's what he's going to go with there um in my opinion right or a five two three it depends what kind of a player he is but again you've got Xabi Alonso there as well which is no real surprise now as we get into the top four we're going to see pretty much the same thing you've got Xabi Alonso again you've got your front three your back four. And that obviously can be changed into a back five with Frankie de Jong or Patrick Vieira, depending on how they're trained. Again, not much to analyze here, boys, at all, really. Um, which, listen, it is a pity, man, that there is no real variation and that you can kind of look at teams and say like, oh, why is this guy doing this? Why is this guy doing that? There is no question to be had with this, man. The problem with the game at the moment is that the game is too centralized. Now, it's only a problem if you don't enjoy playing that way. If you play this way, not only do you limit losing games you also limit a lot of the issues with the game. You know what I'm saying? Where you're like limiting a lot of the AI uh, inaccuracies, you're limiting a lot of the like collision systems, the AI movement, because these guys know exactly how the AI move because they're playing the same starting 11 every single game, 100 games, 200 games in. Um, so yeah, Vinny, Hoynes, Romario, Frankie de Jong, Pirlo, again, your flat four with three center backs of Wan-Bissaka, very very simple and again who are we using the champs not alonso this time but the champs okay have we seen another manager yet no it's been the champs for alonso and that's going to continue until we get to southgate here who is a bit of a change up but again you've got your flat four that can turn into a flat five with frank reichardt and bappe neymar messi baggio davits very simplified davits can just play as a single man midfielder if he wants to with reichardt back when you're losing the ball i'm going to show you that in a second right so as we get up to rank number one this guy's squad is set up quite interestingly, right? So he's got Shevchenko and Roy McCoy. He's using Alonso. So one of the 10 are using Southgate. The rest are using, I think it's six Alonso and three uh, Deschamps or else four Deschamps and five Alonso. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, or four and four, sorry. Um, we didn't keep track, right? Because it's not really important, man. You know what these managers do. Nesta, uh, Araujo, Costa Corta, Puyo, the new Nesta and Costa Corta are there. Czech is probably the best goalkeeper in the game. That's my opinion as well. Rodri can play as a DMF or a CB. Now, I'm going to show you with this guy, right, that looks can be deceiving with these starting setup squads. And I have replicated his squad in here with just a couple of little changes to make it even more streamlined, okay? So we've got our flat four. The players that you're using here don't really matter, right? So you can swap out Van Boyten. It doesn't really matter. Like, you can swap him out with Beckenbauer. You can swap him out with any of your center backs that you have here. It doesn't really matter. The only thing I would say is not to use, you know, two of anybody, right? If you're using two of any player at the back, I would definitely recommend to use build up rather than destroyer. So if you look at here, Aldair is a destroyer, Van Buyten is a destroyer, but we've got Turam as a defensive fullback, Saliba as a build up, and Costa Court as the defensive fullback, okay? Don't have too many destroyers in. Now you will see here, right? 
why we have Beckham here, it's not really a big, a big change either. We can put any right midfielder in there. It doesn't really make a difference. Although the only trick is that this is not going to be really the setup that these players use. It's going to be this, right? So we will have a sub-tactic where it can switch to this. Now, this is a very popular formation at the moment, which is a 5-2-3. Now, you can slightly alter this if you want to, which I've seen some people do, and they can do that. Um, where they like keep central there, they have their double pivot there, and if they're two blocks, all right? You can do that, but most people are now playing with the three men up front. So you have your one man kind of uh, army up here that can win all the, the aerial battles and stuff. Now, this could be anybody, but it is somebody that's going to have an alternative play style. Um, and then obviously, you're completely set at the back, so you have full freedom to either you know defend. Like, look at this defense here. Every single one of these players can play as a center back. So you're essentially playing as five center backs. Also, if you're playing with quick counter, that's potentially what you're going to want to use anyway, to stay as deep as possible, right? If you're using long ball counter, you won't need to do this as effective. Um, but, you know, you can actually change out managers there. It's not going to be a big deal, like such as uh, Saukit. If Saukit is playing as long ball counter manager, right, he's going to be naturally more deep when he has the ball. So you probably don't need to do this if you're playing as a long ball manager. And if that's the case, you can always just switch it up here that you have an extra DMF there. It's not going to make too much of a difference to the squad, to be honest with you. Um, it's just going to be something a little bit more kind of, I suppose, meta, where you have a double pivot there in the midfield. That's going to be DMF, DMF. And then also you're going to have your attack and trio up front. Now that's where Beckham could be switched out, or you could switch him to an AMF, or of course you could switch him out here which is all you would do is go into your substitutions and bring on an attack and midfielder that's going to do a job for you in there. So you could start with that, that but when you switch it to the in-game, you're going to be playing with a 4-2-4. So yeah, look lads, as I said, man, a lot of people have been asking me to analyze the top 10. There isn't much analysis needed. As I said, there's it's, it's all about limiting, you know, losing possession and limiting losing the ball in dangerous areas. When you get the ball in the box, it's instant shooting. Um, a lot of people aren't even using, you know, the OP players now, like Blitz Curler and stuff like that. We do have a lot of those guys in our squad, um, you know, that were really powerful before, like Blitz Curler, Kiesa, uh, or Salah, or any of those guys that had special abilities. But I don't even think that that matters too much now, so to speak, because I think a lot of people are using... Um, you know, very similar tactics and very similar systems to be able to just score, you know? So you don't really need players that are like 95 plus finishing and everything or Blitz Carter and everything because Blitz Carter is kind of broken at the moment anyway. So yeah, that is it, lads. That's a video that you guys have been asking me to do. Let me know if any of these formations, if you've tried them, if you, if you play this way. Let me know your top rank as well in the comments below. And just give me a quick comment. Your top rank, what manager you're using, and that's all I want to see. And we'll do a video on that as well, maybe. So if you want to be featured, please do subscribe. Please do like the video and let me know in the comments below. Peace.